So how much money was raised at September Saturdays? A little over 13000 That's pretty good. It's pretty good. So that's probably the same or more than the past? How we've been doing with um, that? Last year we did have a, a little bit um, higher proceed amount. It mm -hmm. was uh, closer to fifteen. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been pretty consistent over the last five or six years so with between 13 on, and yeah. 15. Mm -hmm. So it's something you can count on pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. And all that money goes to communities and schools. It does. It benefits our after school programs, our mentoring program, and our REACH scholarship program. Awesome. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, communities and schools. I've got Mitzi Teal. The executive director? Correct. Yes, so uh, we're gonna be talking about that today. Uh, she talked about Match Mentor, uh, After School Program, and the REACH Program, the REACH Scholarships. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into those in detail in just a little bit. But first, as per tradition, with this show, we do not reveal what we're cooking to our guest until they are here on set. So we've got the ingredients cloaked with the beach towel of deception <laughs> is what we call it. So I'm gonna reveal the ingredients to you and give you a chance to figure out what we're cooking today. All right. Are you ready for I'm this? I'm ready, let's All go. Right. Okay, mm. check it out. Okay. Wow. Lots of different stuff. Lots of different variety. stuff. It is gonna be two recipes. Okay. Any guesses? Two recipes. So yes. maybe we have a um, an entree and maybe a dessert. Yes, you are on to it. I'm on to yeah. that there. Yes. So um, I'm thinking we're going to have something with the chicken spinach pasta and tomato sauce possibly, maybe. And then... This may give it away. Yeah. Okay. Guess not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still okay. not. Okay, I'll let you in on the secret. Okay, yes, please. Okay, so we're having match mentor tea soup. Oh, neat. And it's <laughs> that's a, a great It's a garlic funny. Tuscan soup. Okay. So that's the first thing. And then we're doing after school program cracker buckeyes. That is too creative. There you go. Yeah. I that's going to be great. Anyway, I'm excited. <laughs> so we're, we're all set. We're going to cook the soup first. Okay. Uh, and we'll be right back. First recipe, match mentortellini soup. Okay. Okay, so this is the main ingredients are chicken, spinach, and then of course the tortellini. So we're gonna start with onion. So we're gonna mince this up a little bit, get it chopped real fine. And we're gonna saute this until it gets nice and soft. Add a little garlic, get that going for a bit. And then we'll be able to add our other ingredients. This soup goes pretty quick. Um, this is actually, a, would be a good soup for people who work during the week. Uh, come home, you could go ahead and have the you can actually buy this stuff already chopped up in the grocery mm -hmm. store. Yes, so you can. if you didn't want to spend that time, which, you know, that was what, like a minute? So we need two tablespoons mm -hmm. of butter. Yep. So what I like to do is cut that into smaller pieces. That way it'll melt a little quicker. All right. Got that going. I'm going to grab a wooden spoon and I'll let you do the honors of pouring that in there. Okay. Now we'll assist. You Thank you much. Awesome. I think garlic is next, right? Yep. And we can wait just a little okay. bit on that. So, cause I don't like to do the garlic right away because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little too brown and it gets bitter. But yeah, that'd be next. While we're waiting okay. for this to soften up, why don't you tell me how in the world you became to be the executive director of CIS? Okay. Well, I started out teaching. And when I was a teacher at Sweetwater Elementary School, I um, ran after school program uh, there and a 21st century grant. And then I went back to school and got my leadership uh, add on and um, decided I wanted to go into administration. Mm -hmm. And so there was um, some administrative positions opening um, 
up in the district that focused on CIS and running the after school programs, the grant based, the fee based, and um, the mentoring program. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I've been doing that about 13 years now. Um, real excited, just I'm starting my 21st year with the, the school system. And um, so that's how I got started. And then we've just grown the program uh, since then. But CIS really started back in 1995. The school system saw okay. this as a need. Mm -hmm. um, CIS was, um, has been around for 40 years and they are a nationally known organization. And so the school system felt like this would be a good partnership. Mm -hmm. So in order for that to happen, there was a community needs assessment, like a gap analysis, because you don't want to start nonprofits in the community um, unless you know that there's a need for one. Right, right. And then you don't want to duplicate services. We, right. we do an amazing job in Douglas County of not duplicating services. With, through CORE. Through CORE, through right. our family connections. And we're um, a heavy, we, you know, we are a partner with them. Shout out to Amanda Bryant. That's right. She does an amazing job. And so that's actually where we started. They, mm -hmm. uh, we were an umbrella organization that started under them because of the 501c3. And then her and um, Judge Walker and a couple of other um, members of the core board mm -hmm. worked with me uh, and the school system to get CIS our own 501c3. Okay. And we moved from an advisory board capacity mm -hmm. to an actual governing board. Okay. And so, in a, so you're, nine, you're your own entity yes. now. When, when you think of communities and schools, we're part of a larger network. Okay. State agency, national net. But I think of it more like a franchise. Okay. Because we run our own mm -hmm. program. We have our own governing board. We mm -hmm. decide what we need based on our community. Right. But we still have state and national standards. Right. We have to follow. We are nationally accredited, which means that we've gone through... Um, National credentialing, uh -huh. which is a best practice um, that most nonprofits do. You have standards of excellence that you go through. So right. we went through that a couple of years ago and we're nationally accredited. Um, but it's always all grants nowadays, which is what we are financially um, maintained by is grant funding. Right. And some, uh, and some from, from the fundraising uh, right, events. Fundraising from That we'll talk about a little yep. bit. And then, of course, the school system mm -hmm. and their part. Um, and, but CIS of Douglas County is specific to serving the students within the school system. Okay. Because with over 26,000 students, there is a great need. Yeah. And so the gaps that were identified were after school programming, um, character education, um, mentoring. Mm -hmm. And then um, a few years after I started, we, um, we brought in the Performance Learning Center. Okay. which is a non-traditional high school program, which is mm -hmm. a registered trademark of communities and schools of Georgia. And that's, that's where kids who don't necessarily feel like they're fitting into mm -hmm. high school, they can, Absolutely. instead of dropping out, yes. they go over to the performance learning Absolutely. Center. Um, and that's the whole focus of communities and schools is that we're here to help bridge the gap, to make the connections, to help our students to graduate from high school and be productive um, citizens and to be successful and have them some marketable skills upon graduation. Right. So there's a plethora of programs that fall under communities and schools because we've grown mm -hmm. from just, you know, fee days after school at 20 schools. Um, actually, we didn't even serve all 20 schools at the time. And we had one after school grant and just a small handful of mentors to um, over 3,000 who stay every day in mm -hmm. all 20 of our elementary after school programs where parents pay for them to go. We have United Way scholarships that pay for, um, help pay for tuition. Mm -hmm. We have the 21st Century Grant that we partnered with the school system to write, um, which serves uh, 20 different schools. It's a competitive mm -hmm. grant process, um, elementary to high school. And then the Match Mentoring Program is in every one of our schools, K-12. That's awesome. Uh, and then REACH Scholarship is something we can talk about too, but it started um, in 2012. Okay. It's an elite scholarship program that was started by the governor, that we were one of the first school systems to be asked to participate. Awesome. So we have 37 REACH scholars, which eight just graduated last year and are now in an in Georgia college. Cool. Um, they got a $10,000 college scholarship, wow. which we raised part of the money for. That's awesome. So, yeah. so we're on the cutting edge in Douglas County. Communities and schools is making a difference. And, uh, you know, statistics say that per dollar, it's, it's way more advantageous to invest in education and mm -hmm. these types of things mm -hmm. versus waiting because some of those will wind up in the 
the judicial system where it costs even more. Yeah. So, in my opinion, I think the sheriff's department should be giving y'all some money too. <laughs> we'll work on that. <laughs> They're great supporters. They work yeah. with us um, with a lot of uh, different initiatives and projects that we have. So we're we're we have a really great community. I think between the local government, mm -hmm. the law enforcement, and um, the ju judicial system, they work with us in a lot of capacities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but you can always improve on every partnership. Right. And right. That's our goal is to see what we can do to help our students and to serve more students mm -hmm. each and every year. Quantity and quality. Absolutely. That's yes. the key to have to have both. Yes. All right, I think we're ready for okay. the garlic. How much right. garlic's going in there? So we gotta have three cloves. Three cloves. And a half a teaspoon mm -hmm. is a clove. Yep. There we go. So three halves. Yep. Equals a whole. <laughs> One. Oh math. Two. Three. And if you like lots of garlic, then <laughs> gosh, add more garlic. If you yes. don't like garlic, don't put it in. You might want to. Soups are, are those fun things that sort of allow you to add what you like and omit what you don't like. There's no real science to this. And you can just throw in what you what you have left over in the fridge. So you were Smells saying good. you were saying you, you've had a, a dish kind of like this, except it wasn't a soup. Yeah, it was in a soup. Um, you, we took chicken breast, and of course, we. Um, you can use the same type that we have here, the rotisserie. Mm -hmm. um, if you want thicker chunks of chicken, you can just, you know, um, saute your chicken breast, and then you add chicken broth. And um, I added um, the same type of new. You can any type of pasta will work too. Mm -hmm. Sun dried tomatoes, mm -hmm. um, uh, peppers, onions, right, and then the spinach as well. It was really good. My, my boys will eat that anytime you I make like it. Ten boys. <laughs> seems I have like four. They just come yes. out of everywhere. I have four. And they were great this year at September Saturdays. Oh, yes. Had they, them all out there working. I did. I have I, every, Friday and Saturday. All four of them were there to help. And for those of you who've been living under a rock, September Saturdays <laughs> is a festival that's been going on for years. 16, and, 17 yeah, years maybe. And communities and schools has been the beneficiary for the for most of mm -hmm. it. And uh, Mitzi brings her crew out there. She manages all the vendors. And I mean, how many vendors do we have this year we for the had, first week? The first week we had 109. Good and then grief. the second week we had close to that. And then, um, of course, then we manage, you know, the inflatables. Yeah. Um, we partner with a high school and a service club will come in and man that for us because mm -hmm. we have to have at least um, six kids, six students at all times man in that, sometimes right. seven. We have our volunteer mentors and after-school program folks who um, drive the shuttles. Mm -hmm. and some of our um, CIS board mm -hmm. members um, drive the shuttle. Got to get people there. We do. And then we also, you know, we help the vendors set up each uh -huh. morning, which to get 107 or 109 vendors in an area, in a small area in a short amount of time, takes a lot of hands yeah. to get them in, get them unloaded. And um, it's pretty help crowded set up. up there. It does. It gets it gets pretty intense really it's, quick. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna grab the can opener. Okay. We can start opening cans okay. and pouring in. All right. We're gonna add everything except for the tortellini, the spinach, and the chicken. Those will go in last. Everything else is gonna get dumped in. Okay. There's this. The good thing about soup is it's good the day you make it. It's even better like the I second say, day. Kinda, I'm not going to leave that in there. It sits a day and... No, oh, it's like chili. It, it just gets just better with age. Meshes. There's okay. some the tomatoes. There's the beans. And you have four and, cups. Yeah. We could just pour that okay. in here. Yeah. I'm all about just there pouring. There we go. There's one. I like to do just a little bit more liquid than what we need because some of it's going to evaporate. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put just a little bit of that one in there. Awesome. 
And then heavy whipping cream. It calls for a cup, so how much do you want to put in there? We'll do an actual cup with the heavy whipping cream because we don't want to make it too rich. That's true. But we don't want to make it not rich enough as well. We want it to be just right. We're going to bring this up to a simmer. Oh yeah, that's the secret sauce right there. All right, I think we have a tablespoon of Italian. Let's just dump it in. Dump it in? Yeah. Give right. it some sprinkles. Go right ahead. And that and is And then the cheese. A tablespoon. That's perfect. Okay. This only calls for a fourth of a cup, so. Okay. What you want to do there? That seems like a little. A very small handful. I know, it does seem like a little bit. Just add a little pinch in there. All right. Like a full hand pinch, yes. Like that? Perfect. That looks like it can be it. And then when we actually serve it, we can put a little well, on top. Yeah, sprinkle on we'll top. That'll melt right in there. It smells good. Yes, so we're gonna let this simmer. Once it gets up to a simmer, we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay. We'll be ready to taste. Oh, yeah. We are rolling over here. Got a rolling boil. Smells great. So I pull it down to a simmer uh, and we can add our last ingredients right. at your leisure. That's my leisure. After we get these in there, it'll go for about another 10 minutes or so and then we're ready to eat. This is, like I said, this is a quick soup. Uh, you can make it the night of, have it ready in like 30 minutes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to get rid of this dog. You cannot have tortellini. No. All right, how much do you wanna put in? All of it. All of it. That is nine ounces, okay. which is the smallest package they sell. They do have a, a bigger package if you want more tortellini. But since we're doing tortellini and chicken and spinach, it kind of works out better to do the nine ounce. All right. And this is about two cups of shredded chicken. You can use a, tor uh, excuse me, you can use a uh, rotisserie chicken or you can cook your own chicken however you want. You can add turkey instead. You know, you could do this. This could be one of your after Thanksgiving meals. That's true. Because this is completely changes the theme of the turkey. I mean, you're not doing Thanksgiving anymore, right. you're doing Italian. You're doing And this is two cups, so two big handfuls. <laughs> it's cool a dog would get that one. <laughs> yeah. And this will wilt down a little bit. And then we have some left over for a salad if we want. A lot of the ingredients that we use in this are, you know, used in multiple things. Absolutely. So it's not like you're going to be wasting any mm -hmm. of the stuff that we didn't use not all of. That is a beautiful soup right there. It looks amazing. So colorful. And it's going to be amazing. I can know it. I can smell it. So again, we're going to bring this up to a simmer. Let it go for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to taste it. I'm ready. We've been simmering for about five minutes now, uh, and before we take a taste, we got about five more minutes. So, why don't you talk us talk to us specifically about match mentoring? Well, the match mentoring program started in 1995 as a pilot program between Stewart Middle School and um, the Water and Sewer Authority, where they had some of their employees come over for lunch mm -hmm. um, one day a week, and that was so successful that it branched into them coming uh, more than just at lunch. And the next year we were able to open it up to all of the middle schools and then it just kind of progressed from mm -hmm. there to where um, we have mentoring opportunities in every one of our schools and even um, the Performance Learning Center and the CCI. Okay. And how it works is we recruit volunteers who have about an hour a week that are willing to come in mm -hmm. and um, mentor. And we follow national best practices um, and what we try to make sure is that 
our students are matched with the best possible match right. possible. You're and not just throwing people no, together. Not willy nilly. It's definitely not random. It's not willy nilly. And so there's a vetting process too mm -hmm. because mentors, the school system only. Um, only allows people to mentor who go through the process right. of training um, and a background check. Right. And then there's uh, school orientation and then there's the matching where we have a point of contact at each school and they know the students. So they're the ones that make the match. Mm -hmm. They know um, which students have the need. Parents sign active consent for the students to be in the program. And then based on the mentor's application, they match mm -hmm. the mentor with the best um, possible student. And right. we ask that mentors can give 45 minutes on average a week mm -hmm. to go and mentor. And um, we ask that they at least commit for a year. But we have a number of mentoring, whether it's one-on-one -on -one where you can just work with one student right. for their entire school career. Mm -hmm. You can work with um, a student and just stay in that grade mm -hmm. so the student would move on but really mentoring is about a relationship it's about right. building the relationship and working with that student through mm -hmm. their journey right and that's what we encourage but we also understand that that's not everybody's comfort level mm -hmm. and so in cases where mentors choose not to proceed on to middle school or high school we then have a process where we'll rematch that student mm -hmm. But um, we've been very successful with the mentors going with them. Mm -hmm. We have some mentors who have enough time where they may be mentoring one or two students. Mm -hmm. Some mentors mentor in three or four different schools. Wow. It just depends on right. their They're, situation yeah. and their willingness. Um, we the have, amount of time they have. Right. And then we have mentoring. It's a school-based program. Mm -hmm. So mentoring takes place during the school day. Uh, we have after-school programs. Mm -hmm. So they may mentor during after-school. And so this last school year, we had about 410 wow. students participating. And this year we were, uh, we hover between 380 and mm -hmm. 400 because obviously you have a group of students who graduate right. or students who move. Right. And you have that attrition rate um, mm -hmm. that plays into it. But, you know, the program is funded by Communities and Schools of Georgia, the United Way. You mm -hmm. know, there's a United Way campaign that right. companies do every year. So we have a community impact grant through them. Mm -hmm. And then, um, of course, the school system. And um, so the funding helps to pay for the training, the background check cost, uh, and then supplies and materials mm -hmm. for the schools to, to have at the beginning and the end of the year. But we right. also have academic measures. I mean, it's not just mentoring right. um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. We actually track to see, is it making a difference? Right. You know, how are their grades doing? How their behave? How's their behavior doing? Mm -hmm. How's their, um, uh, you know, motivation? Mm -hmm. um, children can be in the mentor program for a number of different reasons. Mm -hmm. It could be that they're there because they are having academic struggles, right. or maybe they have um, some event that's taken place in their life that's been traumatic. Yeah, they just need a little extra mm -hmm. attention. Or it could be that they've they're new mm -hmm. and they've not transitioned. Um, smoothly mm -hmm. into middle school or high school or maybe they're shy and then this new REACH Scholar program um, has a mentoring component because these are first generation college students who are paired with a mentor um, to help them navigate the process of applying to college and right. the steps that you need to take to get to that point right. which is important especially if you've not had the experience mm -hmm in your family of someone yeah. um, going through that process. It's tough. It is tough. I have a senior. <laughs> yeah, and it's you like, know what it's like. Oh my. It's overwhelming. It is overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it does, to me, any and every child could benefit from a right. mentor. If, right. if you think about the people who have made a difference in your life mm -hmm. as you've grown up, right. you may have called them a friend, a coach, a pastor, mm -hmm. you know, um, but at the end of the day, what they did was mentoring. Right. We just didn't call it that. Right. And I think that it doesn't matter what your situation is as mm -hmm. far as our children go and youth. They could benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Match mentoring, much more successful than partner with a prisoner. That was a <laughs> failure. That was a complete failure. But match mentoring is making a huge difference in the community. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for uh, communities and schools and match mentoring. Mm -hmm. Now, what we need to do at this point is taste some soup. Taste some soup. So let me get some in your bowl here. Make sure I get a little of everything. 
We'll just do a little bit so it'll cool off a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Go ahead and turn that off. Okay, now I'm, I'm guessing this is gonna be extremely it's gonna be hot. hot. Yes. So I'm gonna break one of those little tortellinis. It smells good. It does. All right. I'll be the guinea pig. Yeah, you go first. In case it's way too hot. <laughs> That's a winner. Mm hmm Absolutely. Absolutely. Great that job. Is, that is really good. <laughs> that is yes. really good. And I forgot about the cheese inside the tortellinis. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That just mm -hmm. adds a whole nother level. So success on the yes. match men tortellini soup. Absolutely. It's amazing. And now we're gonna move on to the after school program cracker buckeyes. That's a lot to say. It is, but hey, everybody loves the dessert. That's right. It's time for dessert. And this is always my favorite part of the show, the dessert. So we're gonna get started with the after school program cracker buckeyes. First step, peanut butter. How much peanut butter do we need? Okay, so we are going to need a cup and a half of peanut butter. Cup and a half. So that's like a half of a half. That's a whole of a half. So like two scoops is a half a cup, right? Mm-hmm. So we'll just do four more scoops. One, two, three, and four. Yes. We can just use that to stir. Okay. And then I... Uh, we need some butter. We do. We need a half a cup of butter. Butter makes it better. This is softened butter, so it's a little easier to work with. If it were straight out of the refrigerator, it'd be a little difficult. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut some pieces. I'm going to go ahead and start mm -hmm. stirring. This is a ridiculous recipe. Butter, peanut butter, and then we're about to add sugar. And then chocolate. Oh my gosh. Speaking of chocolate, while you're stirring that, I'm gonna go check on our chocolate that we have uh, melting on the oven. We also have a peanut butter drizzle that's melting. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. All right, it's looking good back there. We're almost melted. Gotta be smooth and creamy. It looks a lot different than when I left, so it must <laughs> yes, be doing a good there. job. How much uh, sugar are we put in there? This is confectioner's We're sugar. Gonna, two and a half cups. Okay, two and a half cups. I'm gonna get the cup back here. I can measure this. And it's said to slowly add, right? Mm hmm Gradually add the sugar. I'm making a mess. Here's one. Teamwork. It's snowing. <laughs> Faster! It's gonna be a lot of sugar. That is a lot of sugar. This would be a fun recipe for the kids. Anything that's messy. They love messy. Man, those kids. They're just Put amazing. all the sugar in it, feed them, send them home. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't do this with your own kids. Do this with the you neighbors. could, but then send them to grandma's or there you go. a friend's house. Or if you are a grandma, this is a great recipe to do right before they go back home. Unless you're my mother-in-law. 
then don't do this ever. Last little bit of sugar. Can it take more sugar? I'm just kidding. <laughs> that is a silly question. I know. Silly. Looks like you've done a fabulous job Thank you. with the peanut we're ready. butter. So we're supposed to put these in one inch balls mm -hmm. and then put them on the pieces of the graham cracker. cracker. So I'll, I'll go ahead and start. I just washed my hands before I started stirring the chocolate. So I should be good. Should be, you know. I haven't petted the dogs lately. So, all right, so. It says to put them on the, mm -hmm. the graham cracker and flatten it flatten out. Flatten it out. If I am Spread it to the edge, uh -huh. smoothing and leveling the top. Mine is not Being careful not to crack cracker. the cracker. Yeah. Crack the cracker. Oh man, these are going to be amazing. That looks great. Great job. All right, only a hundred more. I can see this being a fun after school cooking activity too. Speaking of after school, absolutely. Yeah. I can see some of our kids doing this. Speaking of after school, we do have what's called Lights on After School coming up um, next week on the 26th. It's a National Awareness Day to bring awareness to the fact that thousands of children are staying in after school every day. Uh -huh. And they say Lights on because it's lights on after school hours. The lights are okay. on in the evening. So in Douglas County, we have two different programs. We have the, of course, the fee-based program where our parents uh, register them and pay a fee per day. Unlike your daycare where you have to pay regardless of whether they stay in a right. week, you only pay for the days that they're there. And um, we charge about $8 a day. There's a $10 registration fee per family, which I think is a not a bad price when you no. compare it to your other after school programs. Exactly. And they get to transition straight from after school into snack, which is prepared by our food service department. Uh -huh. um, and then they rotate into sessions, whether it's homework, recreation, STEM activities. And the parents pick up the children whenever it works out for their schedule. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are, a lot are coming from after work. So the programs are open until six. And they don't have to go anywhere. They're, they're mm -hmm. already there. They're already at the school. So that's an added benefit, um, and I think a security for parents. Right. And knowing that they're at school and the, everybody that works the program is a school system employee that's right. gone through the hiring process. There's so, no transportation yeah. issue. No, because the parents have to pick them up. Um, and it runs from the first day of school into the last day of school. Um, but of course, we're not open on half days or um, the days that schools are closed. Mm -hmm. So. But the programs work to provide, you know, academic assistance through the homework time, but it's not intended to be an academic program. Right. So they're not sitting around doing nothing. Correct. But it's not they a, are getting yeah. some sort of stimulation. They're not it's not a definitely not a daycare, daycare setting like you would think. They're not just sent out to the playground to play. Yeah. They do have um, some required program schedules and each of our staff and schools have to have um, at least several people trained in CPR. We have, um, we're exempt from licensure, but we still have to be registered with Bright from the Start, who manages and monitors all uh, after school and camp programs. Mm -hmm. And then we do have state site visits from that group. So there is a level of oversight there. Right. And then the second after school program we have is um, grant based. It's a competitive grant process called our 21st Century Grant. They're usually funded for um, five year cycles and they are academically based. Mm -hmm. And these programs are, we have to write the grant so we have to set it based on a certain budget and the number of students is all budget contingent. But this one offers transportation and academic support. Okay. This is, um, these programs are invitation programs and it's different at each school. We look at when we write the grant, what's the level of need, mm -hmm. what's the data show, and we, we write the grant based on that. So every school's program is going to look a little different. Mm -hmm. Whereas one school may serve kindergarten through fifth grade in elementary, and one may be first through fifth, and one may be third through fifth. Of course, middle and high school are 
serving the, you know, the entire spectrum, uh, six through eight and nine through twelve. But we, um, the program hours are a little different. We have to offer operate two and a half hours um, a day for our elementary and middle, and then the high school is three hours a day because they don't go on Friday because. Yeah, that's just not really something a high school student really right. wants to go. They're done. <laughs> they're, they're done by they're Thursday. Done. So it's been, um, we've had these grants since I would say 1999 at least. Uh-huh. And um, we've been very successful. Um, this year we have 20 schools, which is uh, eight grants. Okay. Um, some years we've had five grants, some years we've had two grants. But um, some years we've had eight grants also in other years. But um, so we just got two new grants in um, July and they're set for five years. We have one that's in year three and then the other five that we have are in year, um, they're in year four. So we'll have to reapply for them. Um, so that's a lot of paperwork and stuff to keep up uh, with. Well, it's a federal, it's, it's funded by the U.S. Department of Education. Uh-huh. As a matter of fact, this is the, this is the after school budget that has been projected or proposed to be cut in the federal budget. Awesome. But our state and our, um, our state senators have been really working to uh, advocate right. for the importance of these programs. So we're hoping that that's not going to happen um, because they do make a difference. We, um, we have an academic homework piece, but it, these programs mandate that we are a balance of academics and enrichment. We mm-hmm. can't be all of one or the other. Right. Um, so we have a summer component where the students uh, get to take educational field trips. We've been to places such as the King Center, the aquarium. Uh, we've actually taken some students to the landfill in Douglas County where they learned about recycling. Mm-hmm. Um, the courthouse and the new, the old courthouse museum. So there's a lot of different opportunities we've been able to provide for the students and we do track academics and um, to, you know, our goal is to, as we go through the year, progress monitor and make changes to the program that's going to benefit all the students. Right. Um, but it's not 100% a tutoring program either because of the, the balance we have to have. But the Georgia Department of Education comes in to do evaluation. We have um, external evaluator that comes in. So it's a federal program, federal dollars. Mm -hmm. There's lots of requirements and accountability, of course, and oversight. (laughs) Got to jump through all those hoops. But at the end of the day, it's well worth it Mm -hmm. because it it brings in over two million dollars to our school system, two point five roughly, depending on the grant year. Yeah. I think I don't think people really understand how much money comes in to mm-hmm. our school system through grants and mm-hmm. that type of thing, and how reliant we are on that money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, programs like this grant is we all strive to sustain them, but there are certain pieces that are very difficult to sustain. The transportation piece is one that's always hard uh-huh. because just the sheer cost of transportation is a good percent of our budget. Yeah. But we do have a couple of schools who didn't get refunded, not for any reason that they they did. It was just that right. the DOE, we may have submitted four applications, but the Department of Education had a cap on the number of grants that could be funded in a certain year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not a matter of they didn't qualify. It's just bad luck. Well, it's it's... It's all up to reviewers and the the score that they give. All four of the applications we submitted scored in the top 15, you know, top 15 highest scores. Uh So all, I think they awarded 50 something grants or 60 something grants and we were in the top 15. However, they only capped it at, you know, two grants per school system would get funded. Uh So. I think this will be enough for right now. for now. Okay. And oh, yeah, you didn't break any. We're good. So right. then the next piece is going to be adding the, the chocolate. chocolate. All right. So let's take a break. We can uh, get the chocolate mm-hmm. ready, bring it over here. We'll do the dipping and we'll do the peanut butter drizzle as Sounds well. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. 
as you can see, we have started with the, uh, the Buckeyes. We got the chocolate on here. So we'll just continue getting these done and then we'll drizzle some peanut butter. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that you have a variety of different options here where you can chill them and they can be a little more firm or you can eat them immediately if you'd like that gooey yeah. centerpiece. Heck yes, we will be partaking very soon, very soon. Something we did find is uh, that you got to make sure that the peanut butter is stuck to the graham cracker when you <laughs> put these into the chocolate. We only had one where the peanut butter came off and we salvaged it, but that's just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Also, sometimes the chocolate doesn't completely cover the peanut butter, so what we do is we just use a knife or a, some sort of a spreader and just coat the top. Last one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get the uh, peanut butter. That one's not very pretty. Do we have a spoon? <laughs> I'm gonna grab a spoon. No, it's pretty. Now this is where you can get a little uh, fancy. And you just drizzle. I have the shakes anyway, so <laughs> this works out well for me. This is why we put it, <laughs> filming the uh, mad dog over there. She's been pretty good so far this episode, but her patience is wearing thin. This is why we put the graham crackers and peanut butter and chocolate on the, uh, the rack with the parchment paper, because we can, we can afford to make a little bit of a mess with the peanut butter. And as you can see, I am. I'm gonna add a little more to these because I like peanut butter. That's fancy, huh? It is. Man, well, those turned out better than I thought they would. They look great. I never have much confidence in my <laughs> abilities to do this kind of thing, so I'm happy with that. They look great. And now, without further ado, all right, let's pick one. I'm gonna get this smaller one here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this one. <clears throat> and I'm imagining one of these is gonna be enough. Yeah, this, I would think so. That's a lot of peanut butter it and chocolate a lot of peanut butter. sugar. And, All right, here we, here go. we go. It's awful. Very good. You know, Just awful. we need a cup of milk. Oh my gosh. That would be yes. best. Yeah, with when it. we cut, we're so <laughs> going to the milk. Oh my gosh. Chocolate milk, mm. peanut butter. And you were saying one thing you can do is put these in the freezer or mm -hmm. the fridge and let them get cold. Let them cold. Mm -hmm. That now, would be perfect. I was trying to think what you could do if you have folks who have peanut allergies. Because mm -hmm. that might be a one problem. thing. A problem. Yeah. And I know you could drizzle the top with maybe caramel. Oh, yeah. But I'm not sure about that, what that base is that you could put underneath instead of peanut butter. Yeah. Uh, have to think ground about. beef. <laughs> No? <laughs> no, I don't think Not that's gonna, beef. I don't think that's gonna work. Pudding. How about pudding? Pudding might. But I think pudding. it's gonna have to be thick or and kinda it's gonna have to sit. That might you something could do that's a, gonna be just the chocolate. You could. Or you could do just the mousse mm -hmm. and then drizzle with the caramel. You could do that. Yeah, plenty of options. Go yep. out there and figure out your own option. Thank you so Absolutely. much for being on the show today. Communities and schools, it. Mitzi Teal representing doing great things in the community. And this show is called Servings Kitchen with a Cause because we want you to get out there and volunteer. If somebody wants to volunteer with you guys, get involved with a mentoring mm -hmm. program, give you cash. How we'll take that in, too. How do they get in touch with you? Um, they can contact me at 770-651-2039 or they can email me. Okay. For mentoring, it's mentor, pretty okay. easy, at um, douglas.k12.ga.us or my email is um, M. Teal 
at cisga.org. Okay, that's easy So they enough. can connect with me either way. Awesome. So yeah. again, get out there, do something. If it's not with these guys, go out there and find something mm -hmm. to do that will better your community. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next month.